Original. Welcome to Web Crawlers, a podcast where we do a deep dive into some of our favorite unsolved mysteries. Each week, we will introduce our topic, lay out our research and findings, reveal some conspiracy theories, and conclude with our own hypothesis. Who knows, we might even solve the case. I'm Allie Siegel. And I'm Melissa Stetton. Web Crawlers has a Patreon to get access to rewards, bonus episodes, videos, shout outs, and merchandise discounts, please go to patreon.com slash webcrawlers. You can donate as little as $2 a month to become one of our bimbo patrons. Yeah, hot bitch patron. Patron. Pa- is it patron or it's patron? It's pa- patron. 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 I don't I don't there, know. I, Who knows? Something wrong with you me. know, for merch, you can go to webcrawlerspod.com or hothorse.horse. <laughs> if you're nasty. <laughs> if you're nasty. Um, now we have some even bigger news. Big uh, news. Huge. Melissa, do you want to tell everyone? We're on Cameo. Yeah, we've done several so far. We've done like really? five. Yeah, they they loved it. People, it's, you know, Cameo is the app where you can pay celebrities. Yeah, huge celebs. Huge celebs to give you a little message. Yeah, a video message. A video message. Anything. Like, it could be, like, to pump you up, to say happy birthday. Yeah, to say, you know, I'm sorry that your pet died. Yeah, sorry, you know? your pet died. <laughs> or, like, fo- follow me on Instagram. Yeah, we've done all We've done all the whole wide variety of yeah, messages. Yeah, we've done it all. So if you want me and Melissa to record you a video being like, hey, follow so-and-so on Instagram or, like, like buy my yeah. product or or you know say happy birthday to my mom happy birthday to my mom who or, doesn't know who we are yeah exactly, exactly. Uh, you can you can catch us on cameo 20 bucks a vid amazing so, you know something we did we did start at five dollars yeah and you know there might be times where we have like you know special we're doing them for five bucks yeah you never know so watch out watch out also we had mentioned bob larson the exorcist in our last episode and someone brought it to our attention we were we were researching him on the fly during the yeah. episode we found yeah. him while we were recording uh someone brought it to our attention he's not a nice dude no yeah so uh upon researching him more independently we just want everyone to know we don't support him. No, he's very anti-LGBT. And we are pro-LGBTQ. Yeah, so we're not going to go to his thing. Yeah, so we're not going <laughs> to go to his event. Him. We're not going to support him. So we just want everyone to know we are anti-Bob Larson. All right, we've got some Patreon shout outs. Yeah, who? who? We've got Mel L, Jaina M, David K, Natasha A, Jamie U, Christina D, Kiera M, John L. Tyler B., Michaela M., Christopher D., GGL, and King Beavis. Oh, King Beavis. Thank Yo, you all thanks, for contributing. Thanks, King Beavis. You guys have some exciting stuff ahead of you. <laughs> Weird thing of the week. Melissa, explain this article to me. Okay, this is from Vice. Okay. The article is called, I Accidentally Uncovered a Nationwide Scam on Airbnb this is from insane. Ali Conti. Oh, that's my name. Yeah, well, she spells it A A A. Nope, A L L A A L A E A. Ali Conti. Okay, so this article just came out on the thirty first. So this woman was staying at an Airbnb in Chicago. She got it for the weekend, and when she gets to Chicago, an hour before she's supposed to check in, the person emails her and is like, "Oh my God, I'm so sorry." The, a pipe burst. You cannot stay here. Um, so we're going to get it fixed. But I have another property ready for you that no one's in right now. So if you want to go stay there temporarily and wait till we figure this out. And he's like, it's a bigger property. I'll send you a picture of it. It's it's close by. And so she's like, OK, fine. Sure. Right. And so she goes there. Seems legit so far. Seems legit. And she goes there and it's kind of dirty and like there's holes in the couch, there's dust everywhere. It looks like it hasn't been cleaned in a while. Ugh. And she's like, uh, okay. And like emails the guy and is like, uh, this place is not gross. He's like, oh, um, you know, so it's temporary. We'll get you back in. And so she doesn't hear from the guy. And then a couple hours later, he's like, I'm so sorry. You can't, it's, we're not going to get it fixed. I'm so sorry. Also, I have someone else coming to the property you're staying in, so you have to leave. 
And I like, I'm so sorry. And she's like, what the fuck? Like, I can't. So she calls Airbnb, tries to get a refund. She has to get a hotel, by the way. Like, she has to like just yeah. like, pay more money to get a hotel. Calls Airbnb and tries to get a refund. And they're like, not calling her back. Oh and my so God. she's like, uh, while she's getting her other hotel, she goes to a bar down the street and like is just talking with like whatever locals and she meets um, a couple or a couple guys who the same thing happened to them. Stop. They're like, yeah, our Airbnb f- fell through. There was a problem. We had to stay here. And she's like, oh, that's so weird. That sucks. So she tries to get her money back. And there is this crazy clause in Airbnb. It's harder to get your money back if you stay at a place and you complain that like, oh, this wasn't right. This was wrong. It's hard to get your money back if you had just not gone there at all. It's easier to get your money back. Oh my God. And if you stay at another property of the owner, then they're like you only get like half of your shut up money back or something like that. I don't remember exactly what it is. So she ended up only getting like a couple hundred dollars back of like a thousand or whatever. Oh my God. So she goes back to the listing. It's like David and Jessica or like that's the name of the listing. She finds another listing with the name like Sam and Sarah, where it's different photos but it's the same apartment she's like wait there's a picture on the wall that's in a picture in this other it's the same apartment it's just photos are like different angles what and she finds multiple listings like this it's all in chicago it's all like the same oh my god but also the number that called her is uh it was a los angeles area code so it wasn't a chicago area code and she's like what is going on she goes to the reviews of the place and there's most of it is good reviews because the person who owns the place called her and was like, if you have a complaint, just let me know. Like, just give me a five star review. I'll try to get your money back. I'll refund you. That's how they get good reviews. Holy shit. So she contacts another woman who left a review and she's like, the same thing happened to me. They said they called me five minutes before check in, said there was a plumbing issue. Holy you can't shit. stay here. I need you to go to another place. And she's like, what the fuck? And she so meets, does this apartment even exist? No. So she meets another person who the same thing happened. Like, oh, my God, it's the same. But it's a different listing. Oh my God. Same pictures. And so all these people, they all got cheated out of their money. They never got full refunds. Holy shit. So she found uh, the she tried to find who owns the building. Yeah. Because it ended up being there's multiple units in that building. Oh that they God. say are There's on Airbnb. A- so she finds who owns the building. It's like an LLC. She calls the company and it's like a guy answers and is like, it's, it's Jeffrey Epstein. It's Jeffrey Epstein. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's this company who does like real estate or whatever. Yeah. She found their Instagram and it's like pictures of like amazing properties in Malibu and all over the place. But they're all like and she does like a reverse image search. They're all fake photos from like wherever, like different. They don't exist. So this person who I can't remember what he said his name was, but I'm pretty sure it was like the guy who owns a property was like, oh, I just work here. I don't know who the guy is. Like, I just work here and I'm so sorry this happened to you and we'll, we'll try to get it figured out and like never calls her back. And so she tries to reach Airbnb and no one calls her back from Airbnb. Holy shit. Like it takes her forever to get a hold of anyone there. She wrote this article and then the FBI reached out to her. I saw that. Yeah. Because it's like a legit scam. Yeah. It's fraud. It's fraud. And it's probably fraud, embezzlement. Yes. And when she wrote this article, Airbnb ended up refunding her her whole total. Yeah. When this article came out, finally. Well, I mean, that's that's the least of Airbnb's problems yeah. now. So now, like, I mean, this could happen to anyone. People could have fake properties and yeah. then they send you somewhere else. So you do end up checking into one of their properties so you can't get the full refund. Right. They probably have some or it could even just be their apartment. Yes. That they are out of for yes. a few hours and they're like, you can come stay here yeah. for a little bit. And yeah. they pretend it's another Airbnb apart- uh, yeah. product. I got a really weird. That's interesting. Yeah, I got so a, watch out. Like, research your Airbnb. I like, got a weird crazy. email from Airbnb a few weeks ago asking if I wanted to work for them. What? Exciting. It was the weirdest email exchange I've ever had, though. 
It was like, do you want to do because you know how they have like Airbnb, like elite or whatever, like the nice properties. It was like, do you want to work for Airbnb elite and like show nice properties in Malibu? What does that mean? I don't know. Show properties. Yeah. It's not a real estate company. Right. And then I was like, what does this mean? And like, (laughs) what's the salary? And then they emailed me back being like, oh, it's it's not salaried. It's when when it's needed. And I was like, "Okay, so then what's the hourly? And then they like gave me another circular answer that didn't make sense. And then I just stopped responding. What? I wish I still had the email. Why? How, why would you need to hire someone to show properties on Airbnb? It's all people's homes. Right? It made no sense. Hopefully, maybe I'll find it by the end of this episode. I'll find the weird email. It was like so strange. This is producer Maria. Hi, okay. Maria. I want to weigh in for a second. Please do. I believe that there's like two. Okay. So like I know someone who maybe edits this podcast that Airbnbs yes. her place okay. yes. and it's like all for real. It's all fine. But I feel like these companies like Airbnb and Postmates, not to name drop, but like they they're bullshitters. And I really do feel like they because they they forego a customer service experience so or so like you cannot get in contact with them right and i think uber used to be like that to an extent yes and and so what these companies are doing now is they're making it impossible for people to have any complaints i agree and it's absolutely ridiculous because there's no there's literally no um, melissa and i had uh, Airbnb run in. Oh. I don't know if you know this. No, Allie. I don't. Tell me. Oh. We booked a place for Palm Springs for a basketball team. Okay. And it was like really, really nice. Mm-hmm. And it was in our price range. Great. We book it. Then Melissa and Melissa's the one who booked it. Then she gets this email saying, okay, now you have to give us 400 more dollars. What? It was like a booking fee, something fee that was like security not. security clause or something like it that? It was not in the final total. When they show you the receipt, they show you like taxes, cleaning fee. Yeah, it right. was All not it. in there. No, no. then no. Thank so you. then then it's like, no, no, no. If you go read the 20 page contract on the Airbnb website, mm-hmm. you will see hidden, not in like extra charges, not in every, like hidden in between like, wireless internet connection and like parking instructions oh and also we're gonna charge you 400 extra dollars like i could not find this i looked through everything and i like maria's like no it's on this page under here and i was like oh my god are you serious i would not who looks there who looks there it was so then we couldn't so then you can't get a whole airbnb no it's crazy there there is no way to get because everything's automated or something so then finally we just decided to to tweet tweet at them (laughs) and drag them through hell and then they were like oh yeah yeah yeah." it was like a back and forth because if we knew we had to pay 400 more dollars we would have got like an even bigger place right you know because we were looking for a certain price range yeah and it's like okay and the woman whose place was it she's like keeps emailing me she's like you have 24 hours to pay this 400 hundred dollar fee or we're gonna refund your your place and i was like what the f- what am i supposed to do so finally yeah we tweeted and that's how we got a hold of them because yeah. people were responding like oh that's fucked up yeah, that's fucked you, up they probably only responded because you're verified yeah but then oh no when we left the property and i think this is the owner getting uh vindictive with oh us. did they say there was damage yes to- yes they said there was a wet spot on the couch okay so i've i've had this scam happen and it was 250 dollars Okay, so I once stayed at a hotel room mm-hmm. where, okay, I'm like the neatest person ever. Mm-hmm. I you are neat. I've let. I mean, my own, neat. my own my own apart my own apartment isn't neat, but like if I'm staying somewhere, I will treat it like. Of course, I will leave it immaculate. Yeah, because you're a normal human. I'm being. a normal human being, and like that's part of the principles I practice. Like, so I let I get an email saying that I'm being charged a security thing because the room was left. Um, trashed. What? <laughs> trashed is like you're in a rock band. That's yeah, what like, I was saying. Like, they, like the mattress went out the window or yes, something. No, and I was like, TV was smashed. Like, in. Yeah. literally, that's what they were saying. They were like, it, it, like, did you have a party in the room? What hotel was this? It was, um, it was, I can't. It was this little hotel in Idlewild. 
Um, I can't remember the name oh. of it. Yeah, where like it's I was there alone. Was it like strawberry something? No, it was like hotels where every room that hotel where every room is different and like themed. I don't need a hotel like that. And I'm just saying that right now. I don't need yeah, a hotel like that in me. my life. It's like someone's house. Yes. Yeah, no. totally. I, I was there alone mm-hmm. on like a little like retreat with myself. <laughs> I didn't do anything. I like read books in the room and like slept. And so I emailed back being like, excuse me, like I was I was alone in the room doing nothing. Explain yourself. And then they they emailed me back saying, yes, the bat the bathtub was filled to the brim with, <laughs> with blood. <laughs> the bathroom, the like, bathroom. Oh, I was doing yes, sacrificing. Sorry. I did sorry. <laughs> they said the bathtub was filled with paper towels. What? What? <laughs> and I said, I emailed back being like, I can assure you that I didn't do that. And as a 30 year old woman, I know how to shower and bathe appropriately. <laughs> and you throw out your paper towels yes, after you shower. But even so, is that enough to charge a security? They said, they said it clogged the drain. She, they were like, we had to oh, spend like wet hours. Paper towels. Yeah, they were like, we had to spend hours on clogging the bathroom, the bathtub <laughs> oh my drain. God. Because paper towels went down because the drain. Because it was filled with paper towels. And I was like, I don't, oh. I was like, I don't know what happened after I checked out of that room. But I can assure you that I did not spend my duration of the stay at That's your hotel so weird. filling the bathtub drains with paper towels. So did towels. you have to pay? No. They were, and then eventually they were like, okay, sorry for the misunderstanding. Uh, what? This just happened to me. So I just came back from Hawaii. And when I was 16 or so, my, my family and I went to Princeville, Kauai. Oh, yeah, that's nice. Okay, yeah, it was the most gorgeous. <laughs> it was the most gorgeous hotel I'd ever wow. been to when I like it was the best. All right, so I was excited. Online, all the reviews, like on TripAdvisor, f- still a five star resort. Wow, right? it's a five star resort. Can't wait to what get a there. treat. Price was a little low, <laughs> huh? Little interesting, but yeah. it's five. It's a five star resort, literally. <laughs> Condé Nast says Ooh, one of the top resorts yeah. in the world. That you know, that's legit. We get there. It's a night. We walk into the lobby. Fountains off. It's weird. Dry, huh. dry lobby fountain. <laughs> that's dry. the first red flag. <laughs> it's dry. like uh, you know, it's fine. Fine. Our, maybe they turn it off at night. Yeah, right. save you water. Never know. Great. You never know. They're an eco lodge. Get into the get into the 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 uh, hallway to get in the elevator paint peeling everywhere like oh, like no. like huh. like <laughs> scare sc- haunted house esque. Oh. so then we well maybe they're doing maintenance maybe they're you doing know. maintenance maybe this is an older wing yeah 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 get to our room carpet stains <gasps> everywhere no oh. no open my my oh, sheet so no. then so no <laughs> no i don't i can't <laughs> Just this, and I have pictures. I have pictures of everything. No, open like get the comforter down, and it's just this brown splodge or whatever all over the bed. And and so I'm like, whoa, wait, 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 wait a minute. Where am I? Where am I? So so okay, put a towel down because it's (laughs) and I go to sleep. No, I know, I know, Melissa, I know. Okay, morning comes. (laughs) You know what? I'm going to ask to change the room because maybe it's just a room thing. Yeah. But first, it's 7 a.m. Craig and I are going to take a little walk down by the pool. No, oh, no, no. We get down by the pool. There is no one at this hotel. <gasps> and there is trash everywhere. What is happening? There are leftover cups from last night. It is like pineapple, like, like just like cups. Like, imagine... A day at the pool at a resort and no one cleaned up after it. That's horrible. What is happening? So we're walking through. I mean, it's ridiculous. There's no one out. We're the only ones there. It's like someone got up in the middle of the night and left like the management. So weird. So then we're like, okay, this is this is ridiculous. This is this is this is not a five star resort. 
we every trash can is filled to the brim filled to the brim one has a dirty diaper in it <laughs> what is going there on there are exposed wires there <gasps> i told craig this is the sochi olympics of hotels yes. yeah because on, the, fest. because on the outside <laughs> yeah. it's like oh wow and then you get in and you realize that this is dangerous yeah and so i texted my dad and my brother and they were like get out get out <laughs> yeah, now get out <laughs> So anyway, we ended up checking out. We're getting our money back and we... Oh, went, they gave you your money back? Well, we're in the process. Yeah. But when Craig went to go complain to the front desk, the guy there... There was no front there desk. There was no front desk. It was a mannequin. Yeah. <laughs> it had a voice recording. I'm so sorry. But he went up and it was like the guy had been trained to not um, say he w- they were guilty of anything because he was like... There's all this stuff going wrong. And he just kept shaking his head and going like, yes, okay, yes. But he would not admit to any like he didn't say sorry. So then we really dug online and people are if you dig, you can see that people are. You have to go back. You have to go. So then when we went to our new hotel down south, the Hyatt, which was unbelievable, we brought this up to the front desk and they were like, we were like, I, we can't believe this is still considered a five star resort. And they were like, it's the amenities. If they can give you five star amenities, then it doesn't oh. matter what the hotel is. Because if they offer all those things, then oh, they're five stars. Shit. There was a mold on huh? the on the pool umbrellas. There was it was it, <laughs> it was and there was no one working there. There was nobody working there. There was like three people. There was one guy by the pool. There was one girl taking orders at the pool. And then I didn't see any maintenance people. Oh, my God. Anyway, this is I just it was the craziest experience. And it just goes to show you can't trust any of these (laughs) online. You got to dig deep. You got to like you have to like Google Street View things. You got to like make sure because that happened. I went to Mexico. We did a whole podcast. I went to Mexico and they were doing construction the whole time. No. And it was like, no, no, like, you can't do loud that. Loud construction. Yeah, and I'm like, this is a before. vacation. No. I, I just found the Airbnb email. Airbnb luxury retreats home consultant opportunity Malibu. Dear Allison, please excuse the unsolicited message, but I am currently searching for a home consultant located in Malibu, able to join our remote team responsible for inspecting Airbnb's luxury homes. I have copied the link to the role below for your perusal. This is an unusual position no. in, in that it is pay per assignment contract, so it will likely suit someone with a flexible schedule. Oh, inspecting them to like approve. But why would you, you be to qualified that. for that? I, I like, how do no you... qualifications? <laughs> how <laughs> like you... a writer and a, like what do you? T- I think it's just maybe that I'm born in Malibu. <laughs> that's so. That's weird. That's so <laughs> yeah, and then the more I the more I ask questions about the position, I got weird oh answers. My God. I don't. Everyone's a scammer. So everyone's anyways, a scammer. That's thirty minutes of scam, <laughs> scamming talk. That somehow or this two hour episode is going to have to figure out. I mean, I could I can go on for days uh, yeah. about scams. Anyway, um, but should we get to our main topic? Sure. Okay. Our main story, which I'm so excited about because it's so interesting, is Colleen Stan, the girl in the box who was kept as a prisoner inside a box for seven years and was only allowed out to be raped and tortured. Let's get into it. Colleen Stan was 20 years old when she was picked up while hitchhiking in California. That ride turned into a decade of torture, slavery, and terror. Over the next seven years, she would be forced to endure an unspeakable nightmare. Imprisoned for seven years in a wooden crate. Keeping her in a compartment under his bed. There were many times I thought I was going to die. Yet throughout it all, she stayed, even when it seemed she had the freedom to escape. In 1977, Colleen Stan, who was 20 at the time, was hitchhiking from Eugene, Oregon to California to surprise a friend for her birthday. Hitchhiking was something she did often, so she considered herself somewhat of a pro. A few cars stopped to pick her up, but she turned down one where she didn't feel comfortable. A car full of five men also stopped, but she passed on the ride for obvious reasons. Eventually, another car stopped. It was a young couple with a baby, 
so she assumed they were safe and she got in. The driver was Cameron Hooker, who was 23, and his wife, 19-year-old Janice Hooker. Colleen described them as ordinary and nice, but she did start to feel uncomfortable when Cameron kept staring at her from the rear view mirror. They stopped at a gas station and Colleen went in to use the restroom. In later interviews, Colleen said there was a voice in her head telling her to run away because she was in danger, but she talked herself out of it and thought she was overreacting and got back in the car. Was this God or a guardian angel trying to speak to her? Who's to say? When she got back in, she noticed that in the back seat with her was a small wooden box that hadn't been there when she went to use the restroom. She assumed it was nothing. After they were driving for a while, they pulled off the main road onto a side street. They said they wanted to look at some ice caves that were in the area. So the couple and the baby got out of the car, and Colleen stayed looking out the window and couldn't see where Cameron went. So all of a sudden, Cameron jumped into the back seat, put a knife to Colleen's throat, handcuffed her, put a gag on her, and put her head in the wooden box that had latches on it that locked. So she couldn't hear or see, and her oxygen was extremely limited. So they drove a few hours to a house, which is their house, where they took Colleen into the basement. They stood her on a box, they removed her clothes, and tied her hands to the ceiling, like stretched out. He removed the box from under her, so she was basically just hanging there, her feet were barely touching the ground, and he started to whip her. Cameron and Janice then had sex underneath her. They released her from the ceiling, and then they placed her in another box where she was hooked to the inside, and her head was in that other smaller box. And it was essentially a BDSM coffin. Cameron and Janice had been planning on kidnapping someone for a while, and unfortunately, Colleen was their victim. But was she their first? So some background on Cameron and Janice. So Cameron started dating Janice when she was 15 and he was 19. She came from a very strict and religious family, so he basically took advantage of her naivety and innocence. They got married when she was 17. He was beating and brainwashing her and made her his sex slave. He would even hang Janice up and whip her while she was pregnant. In 1976, Janice was sick of being a sex slave, and that's when Cameron got the idea to kidnap a woman he could abuse so Janice didn't have to be uh, abused anymore. So a couple agreed that Cameron wouldn't be able to have sex with whoever they kidnapped. He could only torture her. Janice hoped that by having a sex slave, Cameron would get all of his sadism out and be able to be a better father and husband to her. So that is what they did with Colleen. They kept her in a box for 23 hours a day, only letting her out at night to be tortured and use the ba- uh, bathroom via a bedpan. They would feed her scraps of food. Cameron and Janice would also have sex in front of Colleen. And eventually, Cameron started raping Colleen along with torturing her. She was also given a slave name, Kay Powers. The couple, along with their small daughter, eventually moved into another home and brought Colleen with them. At the first house, she could sit inside the box chained up, but this new house didn't have a basement. So they put her in a coffin-like box underneath their waterbed for 23 hours a day. She had to actually crawl inside the box herself. Their daughter thought Colleen was just a babysitter and maid because they would let her out for an hour every day to watch their daughter and to clean. They had no idea she was living in a box underneath their parents' bed. They told Colleen not to make any noise while she was in the box, so she laid there silent. In 1978, Janice gave birth to a second child on the waterbed while Colleen was underneath. She was forced to call Cameron master and was not allowed to talk without permission. Whenever Cameron called attention, Colleen had to run to the living room, take off her clothes and hold her arms up and Cameron would rape her. Along with raping and torturing Colleen, the couple claimed they were part of a BDSM sex slave trade organization called The Company, which they said was a powerful organization that had her family's home bugged, and if she tried to escape, they would kill them. 
Cameron made Colleen sign a contract that stated she was their slave and she wouldn't try to escape. Cameron got the idea for this form from a BDSM magazine, which he had several of. So Cameron eventually started giving Colleen more freedom. He let her work in their garden, go for jogs, and also helped Cameron build a larger underground dungeon that he wanted for more slaves. She didn't flee out of fear that if she did, the company would kill her or her family back home. She was even allowed to visit her family by herself in 1981. Cameron said she was approved by the company for good behavior. So at her family's house, she did not reveal her situation because she was afraid the company was going to murder her and her whole family. Her parents did assume she was in a cult because of her homemade clothes and the lack of communication, because in the 80s, that's not uncommon. Like that was if you ran yeah, off and you disappeared, it's like, well, our daughter's probably in a cult. Hitchhiking was a thing. Yeah, hitchhiking was a thing. thing. Yeah. So the next day she brought Cameron with her to meet her family telling them that he was her fiancé and they were on their way to see a lecture. Her family didn't want to press her because they thought they would push her further away. Although her sister was like, there's something up. Yeah, she knew something was weird. But they're like, don't press her because we don't want to make her go further away. Yeah. Yeah. They thought that it was like the first signs of her reaching out. Yeah. And then eventually, Colleen escaped. In 1983, after six years of captivity, Colleen was allowed to get a job as as a maid at a hotel. She no longer slept under the bed, but on the floor in the bathroom. Cameron also told Janice he wanted Colleen to be his second wife. Janice was not on board with this, and it's not what she had signed up for. Soon after, Janice told Colleen that Cameron was actually not part of the company, but that it did indeed exist, but actually it didn't at all. She then helped Colleen escape and asked Colleen not to go to the police because she thought that Cameron could be rehabilitated. Colleen went to a bus station and called Cameron to tell him that she was leaving him. And according to Colleen, he cried like a baby. For the next few months, Colleen would continue to call Cameron regularly, but she did not contact the police. Three months later, Janice eventually went to the police and reported her husband. So at the trial, Janice testified against her husband and she was given full immunity. Interesting. Yeah, she said that Cameron tortured and brainwashed her as well, but she was in denial for it. Colleen got represented by Christine McGuire, who was the only female litigator in the county. So Cameron admitted to the kidnapping and described his fantasy of slaves and bondage, yet he tried to gain sympathy by telling the court that Colleen had been ill from substance abuse withdrawal and he had been worried about her. He also said that she had fallen in love with him and he was merely caring for her. He said that because it was the statute of limitations was up because he said, yes, I did kidnap her. But then she stayed on her own will. Yeah. Like I I released her after a certain amount of years, but then she stayed. Mm -hmm. He said all the sexual acts were consensual as as were all the photographs he had taken of her. And there were a lot of photographs. Uh, There were several bombshell revelations substantiated by hard evidence. After Colleen left, she had made a total of 29 phone calls to the hookers, one of which was over an hour long. His lawyer said his behavior showed her attachment to them. Right. Because this, I mean, that's suspicious, but it makes sense the more you look into the case. So Colleen's story is Colleen said that it felt like she was on trial based off the things that uh, Cameron Hooker was saying. So she brought in some experts for help. Dr. Michael J. Vovox, a physician, stated that the scars on Colleen's ankles and wrists had definitely resulted from restraints because um, some of the hookers, uh, some of the people that he brought to the stand were saying that it was probably unlikely that Colleen was actually restrained. Right. But that clearly wasn't true. He also described burn marks that were definitely from electrocution and... Cameron had pierced Colleen's labia. Oh, no. Yeah. Colleen also brought up Dr. Chris 
Hatcher, who had done work on the effects of terrorism, had studied the People's Temple in Jonestown, and had written well-received articles on the psychology of hostages. Chris Hatcher explained to the jury about mind control, and he addressed the dynamics of sadomasochism and like doms and subs and how that worked and how having to call someone master repeatedly, how that works on the psychology of someone's brain. He also explained the effects of sudden kidnapping and death threats, what it's like to be housed in like a dark tomb and then like the the differentiated between dark tube and then bright lights, dark tube and bright lights. Yeah, because she was blindfolded most of the time. Yeah, and how that can actually have like neurological effects yeah. on the brain, having loss of control over necessary bodily functions and how being forced to go to the bathroom at certain times yeah. and not having control over that, how that can also make you dependent on someone else. I mean, it's like being treated like an animal. Yeah. Your animal's dependent on you. Yeah, she when had a collar walk. around her neck the yeah. whole time too. Um, and how lack of communication really breaks down your your will, both like physically and neurologically, Mm -hmm. and that can make you dependent on another person. So he said, like, in other in other words, it wasn't really surprising that Colleen, after being after escaping, still had some sort of attachment to the hookers because that's neurologically she had been change in a significant way where that yeah. that was what and he life. was feeding her yeah so she was like oh this is my caretaker he's feeding me yeah she had become fully dependent yeah on him. it was suggested that colleen suffered from stockholm syndrome where what appears to occur according to experts who have studied the phenomenon is that the person freezes as a way to avoid further torture and then yields to try to appease the captor. If the captor then takes care of basic needs, the captive may feel gratitude bordering on affection. So that's what was happening, is that she started to feel affection for him because he was keeping her alive. Yeah, she even said, like, I love you sometimes. Yeah, But it's like if you were in an abusive relationship, sometimes you feel grateful for any scraps that you can get. Yeah. So on November 22nd, Hooker was sentenced to consecutive terms for the sex crimes, which totaled 60 years. He received one to 25 years for the kidnapping, plus five to 10 year sentence for using a knife while doing so. So if you serve the maximum time, it would be 104 years. Mm. So the aftermath, Colleen was... I tw- saw that he's up for parole in, in yes. soon, like 20, what is it, 2022? 2020. He was up for parole 2015 and he was denied. The Good. judge was like, are you kidding me? Yeah. Why waste everyone's time? We should go. Oh. In 2022. Go to his trial. Go to, because do they do that publicly? Like when they... I think you can go to anyone's. Well, I mean, it depends, but you can usually go to... We should go. At least trials. Yeah, let's go and yell at him. Yeah. So Colleen was 27 when she escaped She suffered severe back and neck pain and received therapy for it. And she still suffers to this day. Like she has to take pain pills. She has chronic pain. She had uh, surgery in one of her shoulders. I mean, yeah, of course you do. Yeah. Um, She went to school. She got an accounting degree. And she also volunteers for an organization that helps abuse women. She's married and also has a daughter and a grandson. Yeah. So she, I mean, managed to... She's a survivor. She's yeah. She, she's in this documentary that we watched, and it's it's amazing how she's it's able to talk such about a good it. Documentary. It's on iTunes. It's called Colin Colleen Stan, the girl in the box. It's a two parter. It's so good. It's really great. Yeah. Um. So she A&E. also yes. Sorry, Annie. She also said, in view from the box, when she would crawl in there every night, there was this photograph of a girl who. Now she knows as Marie Elizabeth Spanicky, who is apparently a previous victim of the hookers that they never found. Yeah. Janice apparently told the police about this, but they couldn't find her body or, or any evidence. Right. She this was a girl who went missing in Northern California, I think, two years before they kidnapped Colleen. Yeah. She went missing. They never found her body. And Janice told the police was like, look, we had this girl. We killed her, or I mean, Cameron killed her. We took her body, we buried it, but they never found the body, so they couldn't charge. Yeah, they said them with it. The girl was at a farmer's market and had got in a fight with her boyfriend, and then so she was trying to hitchhike away from the farmer's market. Right, and then they picked her up. They put the box on her head. Yeah. They couldn't go home yet because it was light out. Mm-hmm. So they stopped and got something to eat. 
and ate it in the car with her in the back with the box on her head. <sighs> they brought her home and then he wanted to cut her vocal cords because so she, she was screaming. Because she was screaming. Yeah. But he didn't do it correctly. So then he accidentally slit her throat yeah. and killed her. Yeah. But then he kept a picture of her. Like, yeah. That's insane. Yeah. And so when Colleen described well, the whole, thing's the whole th- yeah, Colleen described the picture to the police. Yeah. And they were like, yeah, that's that's her. That's her. So. Colleen says that God and spirituality got her through this process and that she only survived by listening to what she knows is the voice of God or her gut instinct. And yeah, do you have any moments where you should have listened to your gut? Yeah, because when she when Colleen was in the bathroom, yeah, in the gas station and that voice was like, run now, leave. And she didn't listen to it. And she's like, I wish I would have listened to it. Yeah, because then I wouldn't have been in that scenario. Yes. And then she said, like, subsequently after that happened, every time she would listen to that, she would be like, God kept telling me to do whatever he said to do. And that's why I'm alive today. Yep. Yeah. Maria, have you ever heard the voice of God? Um, Well, uh, I don't... (laughs) Here we go. (laughs) It's going to be a long one. No, 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 no. (laughs) But have you guys ever read The Gift of Fear? No. No. You guys have to read that. So what is it? It's a book. I just brought it up on on Wikipedia. But it's it's this nonfiction. It's the gift of fear, survival signals that protect us from violence. And it's it's all about how as humans we have these instincts that we're taught from an early age to squash down because it's not polite oh right interesting. yes i think that guy was the whoever wrote it was on an oprah super Gavin soul sunday DeBecker? yeah he was on an oprah super soul oh i just remember i don't think i've read the whole thing i've only read a few chapters but you read the title i read the title <laughs> and it really stuck with it me with you. Oh yeah, the, the cover of the book <laughs> all those words it's spooky so i just remember this this one thing where it's like uh, I don't want to. I don't want to say because I'm going to butcher it or whatever. But basically, it's it's a really cool book because it's showing you how like you get that voice in your head and you should listen to it because we're taught like right. It's it's you being overprotective of yourself. Like that's what you think. You think, oh no, I'm just being silly. Yep, I don't want to be rude. I don't want to be rude. Yep. Oh, I'm just being like, oh, it's just they're trying to be nice. And it's like, no, if you've got something in you, yeah. It's like you don't have to do anything crazy, but just walk away. Well, women intrinsically have such a fear of seeming impolite yeah. or like being seen as bitchy that when they're in a when they're in a position where they feel uncomfortable, we often override it. Yep. Like there was a I actually I think that guy said on the podcast I listened to where there was a woman who this guy was just like walking down the street and she had two bags of groceries and she was trying to open the door. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and he says, do you can he said something in his language like, can we get this back to something where he put himself in the situation instead of going like, hey, can I help you out? It was like, let's get these up to the apartment. Something where he was inserting himself oh, into the, yeah. I can't remember it exactly. But um, but yeah, it's like all about language and it's all about- So everyone read that book. Yeah, you guys, we should do a book club on it. We should do a book, a Patreon book club. We should. Pin, pins, pre-incident indicators. Forced teaming. This is what I was trying to say. This is when a person implies that they have something in common with their chosen victim, acting as if they have a shared predicament that isn't really true. Speaking in we terms. Yeah. Like, oh. let's get these groceries upstairs. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I hate let's that. go in. Yeah. Let's, and Ooh. charm and niceness. This is being polite and friendly to a chosen victim in order to manipulate him or her by disarming their mistrust. Too many details. If a person is lying, they will add excessive details. Uh huh. That's for sure. Mm-hmm. Typecasting. An insult is used to get a chosen victim who would otherwise ignore one to engage in conversation to counteract the insult. For example, oh, I bet you're too stuck up to talk to a guy like me. Like pickup artists. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's all manipulation. Loan sharking, giving unsolicited help to the chosen victim and, and anticipating they'll feel obliged to extend some reciprocal openness in return and dis- discounting the word no, refusing to accept rejection. Yeah. I, this happened when I was buying a car like three years ago and I like knew the certain kind of car I wanted and I went to the dealership and they didn't have it there and I was like okay well I'll just go to the one downtown and 
the guy like refused. He's like, no, 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 we're going to, we'll get you the car. Oh, we're going to get you the, and I was like, stop saying we. <laughs> yeah. get it. And I was like, I got it. He's like, no, no, we're, we're, we'll figure it out. Like, let me, I'll, I'll, here, let's do this together. Let's, and I was like, ew. Yeah, it's gross. When I was buying a car or trying, looking for a car, they're such, speaking of scam artists. Oh, yeah, for oh, sure. 100%. And not everyone, of course, but just they're out there. But I went to the Subaru dealership in Glendale and um, this guy was helping me and Craig out helping in quotation marks. But and he was like, basically, he couldn't give us the deal we wanted. And so we were walking out. We're like, OK, bye. And so then the manager comes over and is like, whoa, 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 what's what's going on? Like seeing us walk out. And and we were like, oh, we just this this isn't going to work for us. He was like, let's figure something out. Let's figure something out. And then he went, look, he's he's new here. He doesn't. Uh. And I looked at his name tag and it was worn down. Like the the guy's name tag that oh he had God, said was new, new was literally like twenty <laughs> years old, oh. and like his name was etched off. And I was Jesus like, Christ. "You, yeah, you liar, you motherfucker, you sneaky snake, you sneaky snake, what a snake!" <laughs> I think that just don't trust anyone. Nope, that's if there's, nope. Yeah, that should be our new exit. Don't trust. Thank you for listening to my callers and don't, don't trust, trust anyone. anyone. It's true. Not even yourself. No. Yes, I'm 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 out of my mind. <laughs> I'm, a I'm fucking I'm psycho. Okay, so the thing that kind of made me feel weird about this is Janice was never charged. And although she herself was a victim. Yes. Because she was when she was fif- 14 or 15, yeah. Cameron started dating her, married her. All she knew about relationships and sexuality was what Cameron was doing. Right. And he was also torturing her. Yes. Yeah. He was. But I've I've read in different things about this where she would participate in the beating, but also... Was that out of fear? Was she, did she also have Stockholm syndrome? You know, well, uh, yeah, I bet she did. I think she probably also did. And like, if she was in this weird abusive relationship with him, she was probably also afraid of saying no or yeah. leaving or doing. Because I mean, like, if you think about it, there was a part where it's like he would hang her up and beat her while she was pregnant. Yeah, so she was probably afraid of the. And he, she's seen him kill someone. Yeah. So she's probably afraid of the repercussions of saying no to him. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know if I think she should have gotten off clean, no repercussions. Right. But I do understand her not being held fully accountable for, like, kidnapping. Yeah, and that was, like, the deal was, like, I'll give you everything about Cameron if you let me go. Right. So at first when I heard that, I was like, oh, that's fucked up. But now reading more about the story, yeah, I was like, yeah, I mean, she imagine being 15 and the first 10 years of your life, this is what you know. I think she was probably the first Colleen. Yes. You know, yes, and then yes, eventually yes, 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 her, yes. her hopes were that if he got someone else to just fuel that attention towards, he would stop doing that to her. Yeah. Which maybe he did for a short amount of time. And then maybe after Colleen left, he started doing it to Janice again, which is why Janice well, she, eventually yeah, told the she police. Yeah, she divorced him. Yeah, she And did left. Him. But yeah. I looked up her. Yeah, this is crazy. She changed her name to her maiden name. Yeah. Apparently, she's been working as a therapist in California. That's wild. A behavioral health therapist. Here's the thing. That's crazy, but also I get it. Right. But now, after hearing the whole story, and now that was like, what, 40 years ago or 30, 40 years ago. Can't do math, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> And I was just shocked to read that, like, oh, my God. But having that experience, yeah, you can give people... Speak from a place of experience. Uh, speaking from experience, it ju- it seems crazy. You know, like... I don't know. Those who can't do teach. You know yes, how it's always... Those pe- who can't wed, plan. Oh, shit. Oh. It's... Wow. It's from the wedding planner. Oh, the, oh, the J Lo, yeah, Matthew McConaughey flick. Of course, that's a great movie. Wow, of course. that is a good movie. Sorry. As is um, Made in Manhattan. Uh huh. <laughs> um, and Failure to Launch. I've never seen it. I haven't seen it either. You haven't seen Failure to Launch no. with Matthew McConaughey and Sarah Jessica Parker? 
No. I think it's off-putting to me that she's the lead. She is a little off-putting. But I, I'm open to it. I, it's not that I don't like her. It's just, uh, you know. Uh, she's not as an... It's before... It, I just threw up. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's before she got annoying. Oh, oh my God. It's from a while ago. Okay. You know how sometimes people in recovery become life coaches? Yes. Yes. I've. This is how I feel about Janice becoming a therapist. I think it's that same idea. Yes. It's like how people, once people get like 10 years sober, they start getting really into Reiki. Yes. <laughs> okay, yes, me. I know a person <laughs> like this. That's I why I think know. it's like Janice becoming a therapist. It's like once you do so much therapy, yeah. she's probably done yep. so much. Yeah. Then you're like, okay, now I want to be a therapist. Yep. Um, and I was curious about where what happened to those daughters? Yeah, what what I found the them. Oh my god. I don't want to say their name. It's on the internet. If you really want to know their names, yeah, if you it's on sleep, Reddit. Sleep. I don't want to say them here. I, don't, I mean, I, I found them. They're on Facebook and yeah. I found Janice's new last name. Ooh. But I was looking at her daughters there. I think they're in like their 40s now. They live in Hawaii. Um, there's pictures of them with their mom and oh my God. they look like they're having a great time. And I was just it's it's it was it was weird seeing her as wow, like an old and they're lady. Also, they're also in mental health. There was one of them I Googled who could possibly be a therapist as well. And I was like, wow. Oh, my God. She's in. Wow. Yeah. In recovery health. Yeah. I'm psychic. Yeah. Oh, and Cameron's still in jail? Yes, where he's in he, jail. Where? What prison is he oh, in? I don't know. Good question. 2022, he goes Cam- on... Uh, but how can that be? How can he be... That's crazy. I don't... I, I, don't, I mean, he's going to be denied parole. He's in the Corcoran State Prison. It's, and so he's in solitary confinement? Oh, I don't know if he's in solitary. I mean, he should... For what he fucking did. So Colleen, everyone keeps talking about how if you watch a documentary about it, Colleen seems pretty well adjusted. She had a baby two years years after she got out. Yeah, which seems. Oh, but she she is on her fourth husband. That's true. She did say it was she's had difficult times in relationships, but her current marriage, she said, is great. Current marriage is great. She did say people. Why aren't you crazy? And her response is the crazy. The person who's crazy is in jail, which I understand. There is an expectation that if you've suffered trauma, that you have to continue suffering. Yeah. And I think that her whole deal is that she wants to be a survivor so that other people who have experienced trauma can realize that you can like thrive instead of. Yeah. Instead of it, you know, following you around your whole life. Yeah. But there is definite evidence that solitary confinement, which is basically what happened to her, can do real things to your brain. I mean, especially her being blindfolded and uh, your head is in this box. Yeah. For 23 hours a day. It's crazy. So this is from PBS, uh, and it's a medical research on solitary confinement. In 1951, researchers at McGill University paid a group of male graduate students to stay in small chambers equipped with only a bed for an experiment on sensory deprivation. They could leave to use the bathroom, but that is all. They wore goggles and earphones to limit their sense of sight and hearing and gloves to limit their sense of touch. The plan was to observe students for six weeks, but not one lasted more than seven days. Nearly every student lost the ability to think clearly about anything for any length of time, while several others began to suffer hallucinations. One man could see nothing but dogs, wrote one of the study's collaborators. Another, nothing but eyeglasses of various types and so on. Yeah, so your brain goes bonkers. Crazy. So solitary can cause hallucinations, panic attacks, overt paranoia, diminished impulse control, hypersensitivity to external stimuli and difficulties with thinking, concentration and memory. Some inmates lose the ability to maintain a state of alertness while others develop crippling obsessions. Mm. They also begin to lose the ability to initiate behavior of any kind to organize their own lives around activity and purpose. What results is a chronic apathy, lethargy, depression, and despair. In extreme cases, prisoners may literally stop behaving. So imagine Colleen. Yeah. When you're, for let alone a week in a box, 
you're there for seven years you lose all sense of who you are what is life you have this one person feeding you food you're like oh this is my life this is what i do like when she was allowed to go to her parents house yeah and came back you lose your sense of identity she's like oh this is my life now yeah it's crazy so i mean this story is insane to me. It's and I didn't, wild. I didn't know about it till you till you told me that it happened, which yeah. is wild. Do they have pictures of the box? Like, did they? Yes, use yes. they showed it how in big, court. How big is it? Well, the box on her head is like what twelve by twelve by twelve. That's yeah. nuts. They just put it on her. No, so that's one of the things they did in the but car, then, right? In like the on. car, but then they also put her in like a coffin type box, which was insane. She would but have underneath to, like, the bed, right? And she crawled in there and just laid there. So she was in restraints and her all side like so her ankles and her arms were in restraints and then she was trapped in this like tiny coffin like box i can't imagine i mean it's just ridiculous i don't for yeah six years how do you not go after you get out and everything i would hire someone to murder him yeah and if you watch this documentary she is she's so calm she's so calm do you think maybe that goes with an experience like this is like yeah, you just you, you can't freak out for yeah. seven years what do you like after a while you're like so exhausted well people are saying that's part of it also is like while she was on the stand the jurors were like she's so calm yeah that's why they didn't really she's so unemotional believe they didn't her. believe her They're like why isn't she so upset and screaming yeah but th- that's what saved her life is for six years yeah. she didn't yell she didn't scream she didn't mm-hmm. act out and that's become her like defense mechanism. Yeah. Wow. It saved her life. Mm-hmm. Anyways, this was one of the most interesting episodes for me. Melissa, where can people find us online? You guys can find us. We're on Twitter. We're on Instagram at Webcrawlers Pod. We are on Facebook. We have a Reddit group. We have a lot of cool merch at webcrawlerspod.com. And if you want to do a cameo. Yes, do a cameo. We're, we're at cameo.com cameo. slash webcrawlers pod. Yeah, or just search on webcrawlers. Yeah, whatever. Also, thank you guys for the reviews. Oh my God, amazing. Yeah, <laughs> keep them coming. We're at, in one episode, we're like, just comment good and say good. We got so many reviews that are just like good. And yeah. that's great. Yeah, I love it. Thank you. As, as long as the review just says good and it's five It's stars. incredible. <laughs> And maybe we'll do like a mini episode where we just read emails because we got some we really cool emails. emails about people who know exorcists yes. firsthand. And if you've ever been yes. scammed, whether it's by Airbnb or yeah. Postmates or someone else, we do email a scam us. Episode. Yeah, email us about scams and then we'll do an episode where we just read your crazy emails. Or and like multi level marketing scams. Yes. Uh, a um what are those called? Pyramid schemes. Pyramid schemes. Okay, well, I'm Allie Siegel. And I'm Melissa Stutton. Oh, and I'm Maria. (laughs) (laughs) And I'm Maria. (laughs) Yeah, we're trying to. And don't trust anyone. Don't trust anyone. (laughs) Bye. An Erio's original. Powered by ACAST.